uh, good evening and I hope you had a lovely day today and your week was awesome. And uh, we are looking forward to have an interactive session. If you're on Facebook, you can actually type in your questions and we'll be able to uh, um, answer them. Uh, if you're on Zoom, obviously we will answer you. So this program is brought to you by Atara Solutions in partnership with Balcon Housing and Stallion Construction uh, Company Limited. My name is Grace Nzula. I am a trainer and HR consultant with Atara Solution, Solutions, an HR consulting and training firm that provides total HR solutions to employers and employees. At Atara Solutions, we help employees who are seeking to improve their performance in their workplaces and those looking for job placements. We also assist employers implement HR systems, as upskill their human resource, as well as find good talent. I am also a manager at Panessa Training School, a carpentry and joinery uh, technical school. Get It Right with Atara Solutions is a webinar series that seeks to demystify issues in entrepreneurship and employment. We are in season two. I am so excited. Season one, we were able to cover 26 episodes. Today, I think we're on the fifth or sixth of season two. So this is really, really exciting. And I am telling you, you cannot afford to miss any of these sessions because they are actually very informative. And season two, at Uchezi, it's lit every week, right? So if you've missed any of our webinars, kindly, kindly visit the Atara, get it right with the Atara Solutions YouTube channel to catch up and kindly subscribe. Um, allow me to remind you why uh, we started these sessions. 22% of businesses fail in first year, 30% in the second year, 50% in the fifth year, and 70% in the 10th year. We need to change this narrative. And I think sometimes lack of information is one of the reasons that has been stated as the reason for failure. So as always, we have giveaways courtesy of Capula Mintito, which is an online uh, shop based in Mombasa that sells mostly coastal goodies that are not only yummy to the palate, but nutrient dense, uh, for example, cashew nuts, uh, raw, uh, roasted, uh, roasted and salted, plain, you know, all those things. Baba powder, birimbi, raw almonds, organic honey, and sweets such as flavored mabuyu, achari, and dates. Hey, 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 my friend, you know all those healthy snacks that you've been looking for. They also uh, offer shop for you services for errands, even for people outside the country at a small fee. Please check out their Facebook page, Kapula Mintito, on Instagram and follow them as they keep introducing new products and services. Uh, today's session is brought to you courtesy of Balcon Housing, a real estate company incorporated in the year 2001. The company has successfully sold many parcels of land in different parts of the country. They provide both residential and commercial land for investors, individuals, and groups. They also offer property management services. They have a broad asset expertise complemented by their comprehensive property management services of mid to large scale uh, properties. Again, uh, Stallion Construction Company is a construction company that um, offers interior design and all sorts of renovations and uh, building services. So I am going to make an apology uh, today. Unfortunately for us, uh, the speaker we had planned to come on board got an emergency and they had to um, cancel the, the session with us. And therefore, they are not really able to join us. That is not lost. And, and thank God for support system. Mimi, I'm telling you, yeah, you guys need to really, really invest in, they are called what? Relation, relationship currency. <laughs> These are some things that you cannot buy, that you can call and call a favor uh, within 30 minutes and someone takes on and jumps on. So uh, unfortunately, we do not have Andrew with us today. However, you are in the best of hands. Uh, I am a product of his coach, uh, coaching, and I, and I think he has experiences within himself and also uh, guiding other people who are uh, entrepreneurs and growing their businesses and all that. So allow me to just uh, formally uh, introduce you to Mr. Chris Odongo. Um, uh, Mr. Chris Odongo is the CEO of Wild International Limited uh, and co-founder of Sandbox. He is an entrepreneurship ecosystem builder and believes in developing partnerships to catalyze the success of entrepreneurs across Africa. 
He's a strategic planning consultant and business coach with 22 years experience working with SMEs across Africa. Have you heard that part, eh? 22 years of running his own business as well as um, supporting SMEs across Africa. He is a creative and practical in his approach. He has top-notch skills in business coaching, strategy development, facilitation, leadership development, and personal development. Chris has uh, recently published a book for startups in Kenya. Christopher is also a public speaking coach and business MC, where he uses his skills to keep audiences engaged on matters and entrepreneurship. At Wild International, Christopher leads a team of brilliant consultants and associates to deliver an inspirational growth program for entrepreneurs that to date has trans transformed more than 300 businesses. So if you're looking to build a robust entrepreneurship ecosystem or build an organization from startup to growth stage or to motivate entrepreneurs or employees to achieve their goals, Christopher is the guy to go to. He has over 18 years experience on uh, uh, insights on entrepreneurship development. So me, I want you to get stuck on uh, the 22 years. Eh? <laughs> That is what we are capitalizing on. And that is what we are really, really um, getting today. And I like, I like um, uh, somebody who said, your, cap your network is your net worth. Thank you very much. Yes, social capital, yes. Relational capital, absolutely. So I am really, really honored to have you here today, Chris. Chris is also my coach, eh? So mukiona even nangarangara. I have people behind me, so I am really, really privileged to have you here, Chris. And please tell us, uh, entrepreneurship. Our top, our focus today is tried and tested. Unajua asia tini ma story. Want to hear? Been there, done that. Tried and tested. Yes. Tried and tested sounds like um, what is it called? Sounds like uh, the way you'd say. Um, Nimepitia majaribio. Eh, eh, eh. Yes, but anyway, yes. I'll avoid talking Kiswahili because maybe we have international participants. Bas. I do hope that we do have international participants. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as you've heard, uh, my name is Chris Odongo. Um, I'll tell you my first time doing a strategy planning session for, 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 for an organization. Um, I was uh, 17 years old. I just finished my KCSE exams and I had gone to visit a friend um, and uh, my friend's mom was running a catering company. And so we sat down uh, and started talking about the business and started talking about the challenges they were experiencing. Um, and the, 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 the gist of the story is, as we talked about the challenges we were facing, we started coming up with ideas on how we can do the marketing, how we can come up with a new sales strategy. And the sales strategy we came up with was to go and sell a catering solution to the local primary school. KCP was just around the corner and we thought, why not go and tell them that they don't need to have children running, to, running home we can actually bring the food for the three days. The teachers and the vigilators will eat for free. The parents can be sent a letter and asked to pay for the food. And imagine that was accepted by the local primary school. And my client, who happened to be my, my nini, what is it called? My high school crush's mother made 150,000 shillings. Wow. So I thought I had already paid dowry, you know, in advance, but nah. It wasn't to be. <laughs> um, and that was my first consulting gig. Um, and so I thought that consulting was going to be a bed of roses. Was it, was it a, a bed of, of, of beautiful flowers? Those, that, that nice grass you walk on with your barefoot. Because from there on, I went to university, um, went to my university. And there, uh, during my school holiday, I would, uh, the first school holiday that I took, after, after the first year in campus, I came back and consulted for a nursing firm. And I just did the same, same thing. I had helped one company figure out how to sell to schools. I went to this nursing company and I told them I can figure, I can help you figure out how to sell vaccines to schools. At that time we had a lot of typhoid 
uh, hitting our schools and there's so much and there's a typhoid vaccine and so I went around high school selling typhoid vaccines and I made quite a bit of money before going back to before we buying back to campus and so I thought consulting is a good thing uh, and so I'll tell you another story another day about how I never finished campus during that time but I did get into consulting and helped um, during the during the years 2004-2005, I was consulting for a book publishing company. You may know it, it was called Kwani Trust, and I was helping them develop their sales strategy. Uh, and then I was also consulting for uh, another organization, uh, well, a small company, an SME that does printing. And during that time is when I did my first strategic plan. Uh, I'd never done a strategic plan before. Somebody just approached me and said, um, you look like you can do for me a strategic plan. That was my cousin, actually, not just somebody. Because, you know, sometimes you think business comes from, uh, from what is it called? From people who don't know you. The reality is that your first business will always potentially come from people who know you. Even book publishing company, Kwani, was being uh, run by a friend of mine. Uh, and so my cousin said, I can... Can you do for me a strategic plan? I said, yeah, I can. And I've never done a strategic plan up to that point. Um, I said, I can do it. So the internet was just imagine. Those days, browsing used to be 10 shillings per minute. So I went, browsed, found a strategic planning template, told them we can go and do. We did a retreat. I remember we did the retreat at the Brackenhurst Hotel. That was the first time I ever went for a strategy retreat. Overnight, I was so excited about spending the night in the hotel. I had them put for me a fire. I, and then I did a strategic planning session, two day retreat. And I wrote the strategic plan and they used it. And then they came back later and said, help us develop a communication strategy. I said, yes. And this time the retreat was in a Voyager Hotel in Mombasa. I was very excited. I was being paid. I was doing things I like. And then I went to work for another company, um, I was a finance company um, because the rain started beating me. That year, um, I looked back and I thought, I, that was uh, two years of doing those kind of things. At some point, I thought, life is not moving forward. You know, these things are not working. Because I remember going through my year, I used to like doing annual evaluations and asking myself, did I make more money this year than I made last year? You know, and two years in a row, I felt I had stagnated. Fine, I was doing some consulting. Um, I was doing um, some work, but I felt I have stagnated. Things are not moving. I'm not making more money. Um, and so I met up with another pal and I said, I may have not seen how things are working. So he told me, why don't you come and work with me? Let's see what we can do. And so, yeah, I did a detour. I left my consulting business and went to work for this gentleman uh, in his finance company. And we did, uh, I did do the stock exchange. I learned how to do the stock exchange. Something that I also been passionate about because when we're in high school, this is now a side story. Um, when we're in high school, I used to sit with three of my friends. Uh, one was called Jacob, the other one was called uh, Job. And we used to talk about owning blue chip companies. And the Nairobi Stock Exchange came and ran a fantasy stock exchange in our school. I was in Upper Hill. So if you're in Upper Hill and you're in the audience, uh, Fadali Tuma Salamu. This is an old boy. So anyway, so I come back and I'm working for this uh, finance company and we are selling, we're helping people to invest in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Uh, believe it or not, I had very many customers who did and purchased, participated in the Safaricom IPO, the Mumias Sugar IPO, the Firestone uh, the Firestone, what? It was not an IPO for Firestone. It was something, a rights issue. Um, I, I, I helped some customers actually buy Kenya Airways shares at 110 shillings. <laughs> I can't believe it up till now. And one of them was a very close friend of mine, Martin. I don't even know whether he has forgiven me, but he bought Kenya Airways shares at 110. We had finally believed that it was going to go to 150 or something, you know. So... Um, I did that. By the time I was leaving that company, I had um, I had about 200 clients uh, trading in the stock exchange uh, buying shares. But 
I did leave that company because I'd never forgotten my love for supporting businesses and helping them to grow. I just wasn't finding, I wasn't getting traction on what is all this. What's, um, I mean, I'm selling shares, but yeah, it's not, it's not it. And so even 2011, 2011, 2010, I had started mentoring some young people. They would come to my office, I would go buy them coffee in the local shop and I would help them think through their businesses. Um, those are five, five of them. One was running a, what you'd call to be a social enterprise. That name hadn't appeared then. It was just an NGO that was very passionate about supporting uh, women and men in prison. Uh, they would go train them and give them entrepreneurship skills so that when they came back, they would not uh, have what is called a reoffense. You know, so they were trying to reduce the reoffense and readmission back into prison. And so one of the other one was running a transport company, helping people to move homes. Um, the other one was running a digital marketing firm. And I would come and I would mentor them. And there was a real estate practitioner also. Uh, and I was helping these businesses think through uh, their business plans, their strategies, and how to go and survive in the market. And you know, as they say, business is very tough. So today, and one of the other businesses was selling uh, yogurt in supermarkets. So today the three businesses, four businesses are actually five businesses are much very much alive, um, doing uh, doing well. It's, uh, the the prison company, the prison nonprofit is working. The real estate company is working. The yogurt selling business in supermarkets working. The media, the digital marketing company is working. The only business that is not working was the transport uh, movement company. That business did not work because we were unable to secure capital to acquire trucks that will have made the business more competitive. But all in all, it was, a, it was a good journey for me. And then 2012, I joined Wild International as, as, a, as a partner um, and as one of the directors running the whole, uh, running the whole show of uh, supporting businesses. Wild International at the time had a program which was called the greatness business club and as part of my as part of my journey of trying to support businesses i had joined the greatness business club i was being run by again a friend of mine called joram um and so i'd done the course you know and i'd said i want to see how to support businesses a bit more professionally so i would taken the greatness business club program to streamline my own business and then during the program i just told them something like hey guys I think you guys are doing the same thing as what I really, really want to do and what I'm passionate about. Uh, how about we do it together? And that was in 20, 2011, yeah, somewhere around 2011. And it's only in 2012 that they sort of said, okay, yeah, you can join us. So 2012, December, I joined Wild International um, as their partner in charge of entrepreneurship. And I've never looked back, yeah, but it has not been a rosy journey. So we start 2013, January, we are really trying to get entrepreneurs to come and do the Greatness Business Club. We are recruiting, we are running the programs. Uh, and 2013, 2014, we had a good run. We're getting businesses to take up the program, come. There was very little competition in the sense of uh, programs for SMEs. It's not like today. Today, I mean, right now I can tell you about five or six different programs that are offering to train or support SMEs. Some of them even for free, you know. Uh, but in 2012, 2013, 2014, we had, this, we had the field to ourselves and we were really trying to push and to market and we we're getting people coming and taking the program. And the program was an 11 month program where you'd be able to come for a half day training uh, in one month. And then in the middle of the month, two weeks later, you'd come for a coaching session. We used to call them clinics. They were never called business coaching. We used to call them clinics and we were really transforming entrepreneurs. And that is a journey that has seen us uh, impact more than 500 businesses to date, you know. Um, so the ups and downs for Wild International have been very, uh, very, very instrumental in our learning. We have always been very ambitious about not just serving businesses, and I also have been very ambitious, not just about serving businesses directly as a business coach or as a business strategist, but building an organization that can be able to serve businesses, one that we can leave as a legacy. You know, we used to, 
say, and I've always been a big dreamer. We used to say, uh, there's the big four and then there's Wild International, you know? And today we are still saying, yeah, fine, there's the big four, but then there's Wild International. One day we are going to be the organization that is known for supporting SMEs, for growing SMEs, and for giving solutions for SMEs. And so it's something we believed in. And it's something that we are, we are always working. We're saying that we need to build the organization in such a way that it can be run by other people, not ourselves, you know? And, and so we always used to run, even when we ran the GBC classes, um, I can show you materials of content and, 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 and how we used to prepare it. We used to have the presenter's slides and then we used to have the notes accompanying the presenter because we used to think that one day somebody else will be facilitating this class. And if they're doing it, how will they do it? So they needed to have notes. We used to say when you're coming for a clinic, uh, you start, you, you don't just, we don't just ask you questions randomly. The questions we are going to ask you have to be scripted because one day somebody else will be seated here asking these questions. And so the entire program has uh, presentation slides, manuals, facilitators manuals. Uh, for coaching or clinics, you have questions that you're asking the entrepreneur, you have assessments, all that is in, in folder somewhere because we're very deliberate about making sure that we are doing it in a way that somebody else can come and do it after us. There was even a process of how to call clients, how to get clients to join the program, how to market the program. Everything was written down and documented because we're deliberate. And so for us, working at Wild was that thing which you do because you're not just serving entrepreneurs, but you're building an organization that can serve entrepreneurs. And that's where now our lessons began because if we are building an organization that can serve entrepreneurs, then we needed to attract the right talent, we needed to attract the right team, and we needed to bring in people. And so we were always and bootstrapping. So you make money and then you take that money and you reinvest it in the business. You make money, take that money and reinvest it in the business. So obviously, one of the things then that is happening is that not all the money is going at home, you know? And, and as you can see, I have a ring. I'm very, very much happily married. <laughs> yeah, and, and, that is, and that is another part of the journey of tried and tested, you know? Um, I have my spouse to thank for all the support that, um, that she has given on this journey. Um, and I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do it without that support, you know? Uh, being able to say that some money will come to the house, some money will go back into the business. That's not an easy thing, you know. Um, and so there was a level of personal sacrifice that was made that made it possible for uh, that made it possible for us to be able to build the company that we built. You know, uh, one of the other things that happened during that time was uh, just the living below our means. You know. We didn't just um, take up a three-bedroom house or a four-bedroom house or buy two cars. You know, we lived in a two-bedroom house for the longest time because we needed to do that to keep our costs low. One of the things that I've always been very careful is that if I should leave, if I should lose my job or if I should lose my customers, that I can be able to survive for at least one year without having my lifestyle change drastically, you know? Um, and so we've always, always lived below our means so that we are actually able to save money and, um, and, and tide it over. And so we are working at Wild, we are pushing, we are getting the entrepreneurs to, uh, to do what we're getting the entrepreneurs to take their space. And um, 2014, 2015, we are recruiting more people. We are saying, you know what, Wild is growing. Let's bring in more people. So we brought in some senior team members uh, to join us at uh, the director level, uh, partnership level. We brought in some as, uh, analysts to join the team at the junior level. And we're growing and we're saying, you know what, things are happening. And then we ran into headwinds. You know, some of the projects uh, didn't pan out. We thought some we were going to get some projects. They didn't work out. Um, entrepreneurs were signing up for the program, started dwindling because competition was checking in. I remember we are a strategy firm, you know, so we are rolling with the punches. We are seeing what are we going to do? And at some point we had to retrench. We had to let go of people because we just didn't have enough money coming into the company 
to be able to sustain them. And that was one of my lowest moments. You know, you're saying tried and tested. That was one of my lowest moments. Meeting with team members and telling them, you know what? We're just not making enough money to actually keep you and we have to let you go. And doing that and knowing that we had arrears to pay for, and we paid those arrears, we paid, we paid down a lot of arrears for about one year, I think one year, three months, uh, right after people left, you know. And one of the things we sort of just negotiating and saying, you know what, we're going to pay you, uh, but we won't pay you all of it at once. We'll be paying you little by little. And what we did then was to prioritize the teams that, the team members that remained. So we'd pay salaries uh, for the team members that remained. And then whatever was left over would now pay off now the ones who, uh, who we had had to let go of. And eventually we finished paying everybody. Uh, and then we didn't owe anyone anything. And then we started building again. And the company started growing. And we started expanding and got new team members. But we then still had a second retrenchment. 2017, 2018, uh, I think it was like a double or triple election. Things were not working again. Entrepreneurs were just not buying more services. Um, and we just had to let go of people a second time. Uh, this time it wasn't so bad because we had learned from our mistakes. We made sure we did it early uh, so that we were not left with any arrears. Uh, but it was still very sad to, to be able to do that. And so we started rebuilding again, you know, just starting to think, okay, so what do we do? One of the lessons we learned was um, watch out for the election cycles, watch out for competition. Um, I mean, right now, our competition offers free programs for entrepreneurs, you know. And so we learned how to also be part of being able to offer free, enter free programs for entrepreneurs. So today we have free programs that entrepreneurs can take. Um, we also learned how to partner with our competition so that we, came, we were helping other organizations run their accelerator programs using our, uh, our methodology and using our, our lessons and using our, our learnings. You know, and today we still do that. We have organizations who we partner with and we run their, uh, we run their accelerators. We call it competition uh, instead of competition, you know? um, and that has helped us to survive. And yeah, so the competition is offering free services, you are offering paid services, which has also meant that we have to be very, very sharp about our products and services. By the time we're able to convince uh, Grace here to come and pay us money for us to coach her, you know, and yet there are programs out there offering free sessions. We really have to demonstrate value for money, you know, and we still do get customers coming to us and saying, you know what, um, Chris, we need you to do for us a strategic plan. Please allocate for us a consultant. Um, we need you to train our employees. Please allocate for us a trainer. And that's happening. And we are busy, you know. Right now, we, ha uh, we have a team of uh, 15 consultants and coaches, and they're busy around the clock uh, offering training, offering, um, offering strategy, and helping businesses to grow. And we are doing this, and people are actually paying us. And yet, as I, as I say, and I, and I dare repeat loudly, and today we're talking about this with Grace, that there's no one who's going to market you. You have to market yourself. I dare say that people are coming to us, and yet there are free services out there. You know, that's because our programs are filled with value. Our programs are filled with uh, practical things that you can actually go and do and improve your business. And then even our competitors, people who will be looking at us as potential competitors are coming and saying, let's collaborate, let's work together, come and run this program on our behalf because we want our businesses to succeed. And indeed those businesses are succeeding because our things are coming from what we call the real world. We give real world solutions, uh, not uh, pie in the sky, theoretical frameworks. We're not an academic institution, but we have, um, trained and certified consultants and coaches. And so in 20, 2018, as we were just figuring out what to do, um, and we've always had the, an idea about bringing together uh, experts who can be able to then support businesses, you know? And so we share this idea with uh, one of the investors who was in town uh, shopping around for ideas and they say, okay, fine, it's an interesting idea. We can, we think we can, we can do it. And lo and behold, we put it together and we start telling people, okay, we're going to put all experts under one roof and we're going to call it the Wild Entrepreneurship Center. 
but that was not to be you know people are saying ah we're not going to leave our businesses to come and build wild you know and so we had to come up with a new name and we called it the sandbox spelled s-n-d-b-x pronounced sandbox and when we launched it last year um it was just um a, a coming together of a coming together of work um, and a coming together of 20 years of businesses are coming together of many 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 days of thinking about how do we help businesses succeed how do we help them do things better and the theory of if we could put experts under one roof marketing hr customer service pr branding uh legal what if we put them under one roof could we be able to have synergies could we be able to have collaboration and you know our nature has always been very collaborative and very uh, partnership driven and so when we launched the sandbox last year in february it was all this was just coming together into one glorious thing and we realized wow we have done something that is actually much bigger than we had anticipated and today and today the sandbox is run by my co-founder joram and i am running wild as the ceo and so we are in a place where we are saying the sky is the limit literally because we are being invited to open sandboxes across different uh, cities and across different continents you know save for corona if corona hadn't been we would actually literally have opened a sandbox in london in ghana in the us in germany um, and we are very 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 clear that we will even open sandboxes in china and everywhere where the sandbox will be there'll be a wild office because wild is a key strategy partner of the sandbox and so those are the ups and downs um some of the other downs of course have to do with just um the usual struggles you know one time i was sitting down talking to joram and saying no how are you going to pay salaries man do we go and take an overdraft or do we go and borrow money what what are you going to do how are you going to pay salaries and we know we told ourselves no we can't take an overdraft to pay salaries not when customers owe us money because we're sitting down and we're looking and we're thinking all these customers owe us money. At that time, it was we were owed about like 1.5 million. And here we are asking ourselves whether we should go to the bank, borrow money, pay salaries, and yet customers owe us money. So we said, you know what? We're going to call all these customers and we're going to ask them to pay us. And the ones who don't pay us, we're going to forward them to the debt collector. I imagine that's exactly what we did. We called the customers, the ones who didn't pay, we forwarded to the debt collector. Hey, the calls we received. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You sent me to a debt collector. Come for your money right now. We were thinking, yeah, but we've been telling you to give us money. And true to it, the customers paid. Yeah. And the reality is today we have a process. After 60 days, if you haven't paid us, automatic email comes from credit at wildinternational.com and tells you, please note that your debt has now been forwarded to our debt collector who shall follow up until you pay us. Of course, the debt collector charges us 10%, but as we have a process, and I can tell you, we have never lost a client because of uh, that debt collection process. The clients we have lost is because they don't want to pay us, and it's okay, we don't need, uh, because one of our values is belief in our clients. And one time we were asking ourselves, does it mean we believe in all entrepreneurs? And we said, no, 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 it's belief in our clients, and we defined. Who is our client? A client is one who respects you. A client is one who is cooperative. A client is one who is working with you. A client is one who is committed to achieve the goal. We work with them in term journey and we work hard to ensure that they succeed in their businesses. And so when we did that, yeah, when we did that, we realized that um, it actually works. And so the clients who we love to keep, we keep. And even when we forward them to the debt collector, they pay. And when they and they come back and we still continue to work with them because they also respect the process. And sometimes one of the things that I also seen is that by us doing that, we're able to embolden our entrepreneurs and our clients to also go ahead and one of the most abusive relationships you can ever have is a relationship with a client who is not honoring their commitments to you and still demanding for services like, I mean, you get the, the boldness to do that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, so we, we, we realized that um, a long time ago and said, the other thing also is we also learned if you, if, you, if you have to pay your bills using an overdraft, 
there's a problem because that basically means that you're saying that because for you to have an overdraft you're basically saying i am owed enough money to cover this overdraft facility you know um and if you're not if you're not owed enough money to cover that overdraft facility then there's something wrong with your business model uh, grace iko shida hapa naona battery inaisha inaisha kwa c kwa laptop na inaisha kwa mdomo basa ni kunywa maji na ni charge <laughs> niweke charger maybe we can hear some comments from the participants or some questions um or uh, or you can field some some chats no problem no problem allow me to actually take this opportunity to apologize on behalf of andrew andrew was supposed to be our speaker today but unfortunately something came up and he had an emergency and had to actually cancel at 7 pm so and really really thank god for like i'd said before uh, relationship currency and collaborations and having people a good support system people you can call and they jump on and take off so i am really really appreciating chris odongo for actually agreeing to step in and and you're doing a beautiful uh beautiful 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 work and we have quite a number of questions coming in and especially on the people on facebook again apologies yani today is one of those days like an entrepreneur you're thinking jesus what else could go wrong zoom is the uh, technology is just telling me uh, no on top of that you the speaker but i'm really really happy that agility you know we are able to bounce uh, back and we are able to take on as if uh this is the plan <laughs> and and this is what takes me to believing that you are where you are supposed to be so i'm really uh, uh happy with the highlights that you're giving uh believe in your cl client have processes that work and there's one thing that has really really stood out that i know is a pain point for entrepre entrepreneurs succession planning a lot of entrepreneurs are not able to actually um survive businesses when they're not there and on top of that actually even walk away you know so yes thank you very much damaris you were saying i hear you grace thank you very much and uh chris do you want to take a few questions or you want to continue uh so i can continue and then the questions can keep rolling okay. um i think we can i can stop at 8 45 just okay. so that then the question we have enough time for questions um yeah so i think i was saying that the some of the lessons we learned was uh, don't finance your business using uh, working, I mean, using overdraft because an overdraft is one, it's expensive, but two, it's also an indication that you could be over trading, which means that you are using, your working capital is not working for you. You know, you're, you're basically working for the bank. And one of the, one of our entrepreneurs once said they had caught themselves in such a debt trap that they realized that the bank was the highest employee company, you know you have to pay the overdraft charges you know uh, and before you pay yourself money comes in and the bank takes their their od money and you're finding that you're actually just working for the bank and so we said we are going to always make sure that we work in such a way that um we keep our uh we keep we keep away from the overdrafts you know work and make sure that the clients are always paying you so we always try and get a deposit from our clients um and 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 in that sense we are blessed because Again, the, the, the nature of our industry is that it's, it's reasonable to ask for a deposit and it's reasonable to ask for a mobilization fee. Whereas I know that there are some industries where that might not be possible because of the nature of the industry, but you can work out a process and a system where customers who get the credit are actually credit worthy. You know, not every customer is credit worthy. So yes, maybe in your industry, you need to give credit, but it doesn't mean that you need to give credit to every customer betting so that you have good customers you can even ask some customers to give guarantees or undertakings that they will be able to pay you know and you basically work out such that you have very good service you have good products you have good value proposition and you will find that customers who are genuine and are in business will be willing to honor will be willing to honor your processes also so that they can be able to get services uh from you uh the other thing that i wanted to mention was um we are very much in love with understanding our customers and them in their journey. And so in 2019, we scrapped the Greatness Business Club program because it just wasn't working. You know, We are here trying to tell entrepreneurs, come for 11 months, 
then we reduce it to come for six months. And entrepreneurs are just looking at us and saying, you guys must be mad. What am I going to do for six months? But you're in your business full time. You're running your business full time. So this is just an 11 month commitment you're making to your business. And it's part of an, an ongoing journey and entrepreneurs are just not boarding. In addition to that, there are very many free programs out there. And so we put the entrepreneur right in the center um, and we asked ourselves, what is it that our entrepreneurs get from us? What is it that our businesses are always getting from us? And we said, you know what? In fact, we even have examples of time when we've spent 45 minutes with a business and that business comes out of that session and the entrepreneur is saying, you know what? You've changed how I think, you've changed my business. I'm going to do things differently. And that entrepreneur goes ahead and starts succeeding. And so we started asking ourselves, what's, in that, what's inside that short interaction? Why is it that we can sit with a business for 30 minutes and at the end of that session, that business is not going to be the same again? And we asked ourselves, what's this? And we said, there must be a minimum thing. You know, like we have been looking for a pill, which if we give you guys as entrepreneurs, you just swallow it and you, and, and you come out of the other side thinking differently about your business. And we sort of discovered that there is the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. There's the 20% that makes 80% of the difference. And we started going down that path in 2019. And in 2020, last year, we idea, we said, we can be able to package a one day workshop that focuses so perfectly on the entrepreneur, that focuses so perfectly on what the business needs to do to succeed, that when that entrepreneur from that business, they know exactly what they need to go and do to turn their business around. And we packaged it into a one day workshop. And then we call that workshop Scalarizer. In that workshop, you focus on the most important things in your business. Number one, what is my value proposition to my core customer? What is my value proposition to my core customer? Number two, what is the size of the market of that customer? And where will that customer be found? Three, what are the things that I need to do to get to that customer? Number four, how many customers can I serve? And will it be profitable if I serve those customers? And therefore, number five, what is my profit margin? And then finally, number six, what can I do to improve my business? So we package that into a one day session, an amazing workshop where entrepreneurs come and at the end of that workshop, they, they are, their businesses, they're coming out and they're saying, I know exactly what I need to go and do in my business to serve. and to capture the market. And we call that program Scalarizer. If you are interested, please head over to our website and check out our, check out our, what is it? What the Scalarizer can do for you. Talk to us, we can be able to give it to you. And it comes with three months of coaching support where you get a one-on-one -on -one engagement with your, uh, what is it called? With your business coach. And your business will never be the same again. I can give you that as a guarantee and you can take it to the bank. Your business will never be the same again. Last tip. I had it on the tip of my, my lips. Uh, um, has to do with what? Succession planning. Remember what I said, we have always been thinking about building this organization such that it will outlive us and it will outgrow us. And because of that, we were able to have a very smooth transition between Joram and I. As Joram headed off to lead the Sandbox team, I was left to lead the Wild team. It was a smooth transition because it's always been there at the back of our minds that we are building an organization where if any one of us is not... As far back as 2013, if any one team member of Wild went on leave, they went on leave. You know, they didn't go on leave and people were still calling them, trying to know. That team member, if they went on leave, they went on leave. We prepared, we handed over, and that meant that our business has always had continuity. Even the directors and CEOs go on leave. I'll be taking my leave in July, um, and I'm looking forward to it. I'll be away for two weeks, and I'm expecting that the organization will grow even when I'm not there. So that, that is the kind of thinking that we've always had. Um, and you need to have that thinking if you're going to build a business that outlives you. 
one of our biggest ambitions is to see Africa reach a level of global influence. That's our vision. We don't believe that African can African businesses can thrive globally. You know? It's a journey that we are going. That's why we are called Wild International. We are not. We are not talk, We are not saying we are Wild International because of anything other than that. We are going global, and we are taking you global with us. So, Grace, Maswali Sasa, you have ten minutes to the end of the call. <laughs> Chris, 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 uh, thank you very much for, for the uh, enlightening and, and the tips that you're giving entrepreneurs who are logged in here today. And I hope that you guys are learning. Please uh, give us something that you've learned on the chat or on the Facebook. Uh, for those who are on Facebook, please leave a comment and tell us, what are you taking home today? Like, what is this one lesson that you're taking home from what Chris has talked about to, uh, today. Uh, so on the questions, allow me to just ask Chris, uh, with all these um, things that, you know, they, they sound like they, they are such an easy thing to do. And I personally know that they are not. So, and I'm glad to hear that you actually take leave. And are you guys hearing that, uh, entrepreneurs, Dama? Are you hearing people actually take leave? <laughs> A lot of entrepreneurs actually don't take leave. Uh, even on Sunday rest, we feel like we tunakosea kidogo. So I am I'm really happy to hear that. And let me ask you, Chris, how is your mm -hmm. day like? How what time do you start your day? What time do you end? So I I I tend to sleep very well. So I start my day at five thirty. Um, thereabouts I. I sometimes help to prepare the kids for school. So I have I have my week. I'm preparing the kids. Uh, and then I, I always do the morning school run as, as often as I can. I'll do the morning school run. And then as often as I can, I'll also do the afternoon school run. But I find the morning school run, I'm able to do it 95% of the time because I'm going to work anyway, you know? The afternoon school run is the one that is a bit, uh, yeah, because you know entrepreneurs say, uh, let's meet at four, you know, or let's meet at five. But I, some, I, tr I sometimes try and do the evening school run, then go and meet uh, an entrepreneur if I have to, you know. So that's that's how my typical day is structured. Um, if I get to the office at 7.30 or 8, I'll take some time just to quiet down and settle in, and then I'll begin my meetings. Uh, the life of a CEO is one of providing direction, guidance, and a few a few times I'm doing client assignments, yeah? So because of that, I'm always doing a meeting in there. In fact, my calendar is just full of meetings and meetings and meetings, one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings, potential customers, trying to onboard them, uh, teams giving guidance, training, yeah. So that would be my typical day. And then obviously, if I wasn't here on this webinar today, uh, today is Tuesday, I would be having um, a, a Bible study with, uh, with my friends. Um, we normally do Bible study on Tuesdays, but today I'm here. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my, that would be my typical day today. Actually, today I was at a client assignment uh, with, out in Kapoor, so we were there doing a needs assess, what is called doing an organizational health check for the client. Um, so that's what I was doing before I drove uh, back home to be able to take this call. Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. Thank you for that. Um, I We had a conversation here the other day and uh, we asked, um, is work-life balance a mirage? No, it's not. Um, I have a philosophy. My philosophy is rest before you work not work and then rest because work never ends. So if I have a busy period coming up, I make sure that I have scheduled my rest periods in there. You know, So I make sure that uh, in my busy period, rest is already scheduled and I take time to actually do the rest so that rest is done before work. And I like to go into so that I'm not, I'll do the work, then when I finish, I will rest. Uh -uh. I say that I will rest, then when I go and do the work, I'm doing the work when I'm very fresh. So even when I have a training the following day, 
I try and go to bed early so that when I wake up in the morning, I am fresh, I'm very well rested. On the 80-20 rule, it's the 20% that makes 80% of the difference. You don't need to learn everything about your business. You know, you just need to understand what is important for me to do in my business to succeed. And the things that are important for you to do in your business to succeed can be narrowed down into, do you understand what your customer's needs are and what your customer is buying from you? Do you understand how many such customers exist? Because if you, if you understand how many such customers exist and the need you're able to, your, the need your business is meeting for them, then you're able to craft a value proposition and a business model for them. And then is my business profitable? Am I selling at a price that is higher than the cost? And therefore, then if I multiply that potential number of customers, then I can actually say I have a profitable business model. That's the most important thing you need to know in your business first to know that you have a thriving, successful business. And so that's what we say. Okay. 80-20 uh, rule. Oh, yeah. Somebody was asking, explain more on the 80-20 rule. But before we get there, there's a comment on Facebook. Mintito is saying... Um, there's somebody who says that the people who are able to take leave are entrepreneurs. All the others are business people or self-employed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. It's very true. I mean, if you really are able to take leave, then you are, yes, you are an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, so uh, let me take a question that came quite early. What gave you such confidence to do consultancies that you had no previous experience of? I think for me, it, it, my confidence, I think, comes from my, I would say, part of it is my childhood and my upbringing. Um, and and, and being, being, in a sense, uh, entrusted to do things in the house, being left with responsibilities. My parents never brought us up with any thinking about uh, limitations or impossibilities you know I was already giving holiday tuition to kids uh, on behalf of my mom right in the house so I, I never grew up doubting myself um, in any way because when I was in primary school I was giving tuition to primary school students when I was in high school I was actually now doing it for money you know um, so I've always I've never had anything about I can't do it. It's always, I can do it. And why not? In fact, one of the things we tell ourselves is you are a wild certified coach. You are a wild certified trainer. And so if somebody asks who certified wild, and I tell them, and who certified those other people who say they're certified, you know, aren't they just human beings like us? Yeah. Wow. So we can certify you. And it's not about empty. No, it's not empty. It's about working hard and making sure that we also have something to contribute to the world. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Joe Mukoko is asking, very inspiring story. How, does you keep, uh, how do you keep yourself motivated on those mo moments when you are running on empty and the petrol station is miles away? <laughs> yeah, so um, I think you, you keep yourself motivated by going one step at a time. My personal philosophy is success is not arrived at in one day. It's, it's a journey. You build up on it. And so it's progressive. So as long as I can take, I can take the heat, as long as I'm making progress, I can take the heat. Um, and of course, surrounding yourself with also people who will encourage you and people who will, uh, you know, what say, you know, ah, there's another way of doing it. We can do it better. Have you thought about this? Okay, what lesson can we learn from this? And that's what my business partner has done for me. Um, we've always had conversations with Joram about, um, okay, fine. What lesson are we learning here? How can we do it better? What can we, what can we change? You know, and, 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 and sometimes when I'm cut, or when it's discouraged by having that thing about we can do this together and even also the team you know being able to problem and say you know what guys this is a challenge we are having how can we solve it and having more people being able to brainstorm on it is actually lightening the load as opposed to carrying it alone wow wow 
interesting. Um, the other question is, what kind of culture exists in your organization and how did you establish it? So, culture is very, very fluid and, um, and very interesting. Um, and it actually goes hand in hand with the leadership of the organization, you know. Um, and one of the things that we've always driven is we are here to work, we are here to support entrepreneurs, we are here to build a great company, and we are here to help people build great companies. And so that bit of time to drive into a goal that is bigger than us, that's always been part of our culture. You know, and it comes from identity. Our identity, we are very clear that we are a company that is helping other companies grow. And we're not just helping other companies grow, we are here to make a statement and to say to the world that Africa, Africans can achieve greatness and we can help you unlock that greatness as we unlock it in us. And so that culture and also just that thing about uh, we are on a journey of becoming better every day. And we are also on a journey of helping our clients become better every day. So we walk the talk. That's the kind of culture we, we've had. And of course, we've also infused other things. Our values drive us. Uh, we are big on integrity. We don't make sure we don't have shortcuts. We don't pay bribes. Uh, we live and do what we say. Um, we are big on belief in our clients because we see that they need that. It's empathetic. We are courageous. We are willing to make bold decisions. So those are things that drive our, our culture. We are very careful about recruiting people and bringing them onto our team because we want people who are passionate about the things we are passionate about. And that also drives our culture. How do we recruit? We try and do it very competitively. Uh, we try and make sure that even when we are recruiting in terms of headhunting or from our networks, we are getting the best people for the, for the job. We try and maintain an open culture where people can share people can talk freely uh, and that also helps with feedback so those are some of the things and we drive them by reminding the team members all the time that this is our culture this is our expectation this is how we want to work this is how we want you to relate uh, we are very big on collaboration innovation so those are the things that uh, that drive us and drive our our culture okay um so thank you very much for that answer um Victor Getonga is asking, uh, now just, just before I go to Victor Getonga, uh, let me just remind you that this program is brought to you by Atara Solutions in partnership with Balcon Housing and Stallion Construction Company. Also welcome you to the Big Baraza. Uh, tomorrow from 10 a.m. You can check out the Sandbox Facebook page or their LinkedIn, or is it on Instagram, Chris? Yes, we are on Instagram. Yeah, so Sandbox or Wild International, you can check them out. Um, they have the big barraza happening tomorrow. We had one today. Uh, it's an awesome, awesome enlightening conference for SMEs. So please, please uh, join in to continue with this conversation with the experts and a whole different co uh, conversation about SMEs for SMEs. So Vincent Ogutu is saying, no, before we get to Vincent, Victor Getonga, is it expensive to hire a consultant for a startup? So um, the question that I would want to ask Victor is, is it expensive to go and learn from your mistakes? There's a cost and a price to be paid, whichever way you look at it. You can go and pay school fees of hard knocks, or you can hire a consultant and pay them and avoid the school fees of hard knocks. Uh, that said, at the Sandbox, we have startup experts who are very affordable, your reach. Number one. Number two, there are also very many free programs that are available today to entrepreneurs. They were not available 10 years ago, but today there are very many free programs that you can be able to get as a business and as a person who started in order to be able to avoid the mistakes. Do not walk a path of saying it's expensive. It's more than it is to find help through mentors, coaches, free programs, or even paid help. And you can find them at Wild, and you can find them uh, and, and you can find them at, uh, what is it called? At Wild International. If you want to consult, contact me, you can reach out to me. Uh, my email address is there, chris at wildinternational.com. Uh, 
you can also call me on that number or you can call my office. Yeah, and we have amazing programs on our website. Um, I think one last thing is there's a free book for startups that you can be able to get. It's right there on our website. There's a free startup book. Excellent, excellent. Uh, the thing about uh, these guys is the amount of wisdom they have. My God, and I've seen somebody else commenting on that. And Joseph Miner, your former high school mate, says that uh, what were upper hill to Kohapa. And <laughs> so, Joseph, we, we acknowledge your presence. So the last question of tonight, and I hope you guys allow us to go up to probably another two minutes. It's already past nine. So uh, Vincent Togutu is asking, entrepreneurship is a way of changing Africa fortunes in terms of jobs creation, wealth creation, and creating value. Kindly comment on this. So that question reminds me of actually how my journey into entrepreneurship began. Uh, so as a teenager, um, when we were growing up, we had sort of like uh, my, my, my dad and mom adopted their, their cousin's children. One of, during that time, remember it was the HIV scourge and one of my dad's cousin passed away together with his wife and left four children behind. And then another cousin also died and left three children behind. And my parents adopted all these children to come and live with us. And we're living in a two bedroom house. Um, and this is my, this is, this is part of my story and part of my journey. And we used to go to church uh, and where we would go to church, we'd take a bus. We lived in Karibangi South and the church were going to, so there was one there, but remember there was bus fare. And at one point my dad looked and said, this is no longer, I mean, you, you, he, he, he no longer can say that these are children and therefore he's paying child fare. You know, it was now, these are adults and you're paying adult fare. And so we moved from going to that church in Ziwani and it was a big church, you know, that church people had cars um, and all manner of, of things. It was really an upmarket church. And we went to a church called AIC Karyobangi. And in that church, the reason why my dad chose it was we could walk to church. The only thing is walk from Karyobangi to Karyobangi North meant you went through a slum called Korogosho. I don't know if you know it. It's where there was a market called Sokom Jinga. And four years and I was in day school. And so going to church was on Sunday and you had to walk to church. Uh, and for me, just going to church every Sunday, walking through the slum, coming back after church, walking through the slum again, it really broke my heart to see such a level of poverty. Um, and I was very helpless. I mean, I'm just a high school student. I can't do any, I mean, I can't, I can't take my bus fare and buy anyone food. And I've always been very pragmatic. I mean, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use my money for bus fare or for, or for other things to buy somebody food just because they're poor. But I'm going to about it. And I've always been passionate about business. I'm passionate about supporting entrepreneurs. And for me, that's where all those things came together. I remember I was uh, I was 27 years old and I was sitting um, and, and going through this um, this Bible, Bible school and were being asked, what's your life purpose? What what are you what are you here for? And I remember meditating and thinking about it and realizing that for me I am passionate about businesses, but I'm also really heartbroken together in a powerful way in the sense that you can actually use business to create wealth and you can use business to empower people and lift them out of poverty. It was right around that time um, that, the, 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 that we had done a process which was called the National Vision. And I'd been part of a group of young people in the year 2003, 2003 to 2006, where we had been, we had been in the journey of, uh, what is it called, creating a national vision. And we said it was called a proposal for a national vision. That was before Kenya did Vision 2030. And that booklet, we gave it to the Minister of Planning then, Professor Anyang Nyongo. And in that booklet, we had said, this is our vision for our country. We want to see a country that's prosperous. We want to see a country that 
is economically empowered. We want to see a country that is political. Uh, and we gave that proposal for a national vision. And it was the framework for which uh, they created uh, the Vision 2030 as, as part of the input. And so for me, the connection between poverty and business is very clear. It's that the better we are at business, the more successful we are at creating wealth, the more successful we are at innovating and creating solutions, the faster we are able to lift our people out of poverty. Excellent, excellent. There's a question that was posed on Facebook, and this is the last question for this evening. Uh, how, many, how many years do you normally work with an entrepreneur? Do they ever come back after several years when they are facing difficulties? And at what stage of their growth do they not require you? So our engagement with entrepreneurs is at uh, several levels. Level one is what is called um, one touch, where we offer you a training and we give you the knowledge and the skills for you to succeed. And at that particular le level, we are basically trying to establish our connection and contact and first contact. And we're trying to establish a, a, a relationship. Like today, we are here. It's going to be a one touch uh, relationship. But from here, we are going to invite anyone who is interested in engaging with us to come, which now takes you to level two. Level two will invite you to come and take our amazing Scalarizer program, or we'll invite you to come and take our strategy uh, session, or we'll invite you to come and take our coaching session. When you take any one of those programs, you're at level two, where you have now taken a deeper engagement with us, and you've begun to ex where we are inviting you to take a long time with us. We are inviting you to come and be part of our club. That's why we always call it the Greatness Business Club. You know, now it's called Scalarizer, uh, and the Scalarizer is going to have a club. Yeah, because we don't believe in hit and run. One of our values is long-term commitment. And so we have levels of engagement, and we expect to be able to stay in touch with our entrepreneurs for the longest time. We have entrepreneurs who we started working with in 2004 as a business and up to today they are still in our database and we are still in touch with them and we are still helping them think through their businesses um, the other day i was talking to one who had come back and said i did the program i went into employment i'm now thinking of going back into business i'm ready i'm coming back tell me about scalarizer you know tell me how it can help me re-energize re and re-engage in business just this afternoon this evening before I was talking to somebody who we had done um, their strategic plan four years ago, and today we were talking and saying, hey, so how are you? How are you doing? And saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the things I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking about my business. And so for us, it's long-term commitment, but we take it in, uh, in, 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 in three levels. Level one is where we just have an interaction the way we've had today. Level two is when you come and do the Scalarizer program or a coaching session. Level three is when you join part of our community and part of our um, alumni and a club where we are working with you uh, deliberately every day. Okay, excellent, excellent, Chris. I, I am thinking it's 9.14 and my people have been very patient. Asante Nisana for your patience. And mm -hmm. um, I hope that question that was asked on Facebook by James Mwangi and I hope that one was answered uh, to satisfaction. I, I know that uh, this team does not leave you hanging. So, and also they don't encourage dependency. So they still work with you in terms of you running your show and then them just uh, helping you discover, get clarity. Uh, I am a student of there. So uh, some of these things I'm talking from experience. So um, Chris, last word. Yes. And, and I'm asking the people to actually uh, write into the comment, what is your takeaway from this session? Chris, your last words. My last words is, I mean, let me just thank each and every single person who showed up today. Um, very, very delighted that you did show up uh, to listen and to hear. Um, you may have come to listen to somebody. I'm glad you listened to me instead. Uh, I'm always very, very happy happy and willing to share our story and our journey because we say that we are entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs uh, to be able to support them and help them to grow their business so please get in touch with us we are very very interested in uh, in helping you win in your business that's our promise and you can take our word to the bank
again, thank you very much, Grace, for inviting me. Uh, I hope the next time you'll invite me, I'll actually be on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> Because this was this was somebody else's guest, so maybe if I'm on the poster, we'll get a thousand people, or maybe we'll get ten people. Doesn't matter. I want to be on the poster because I need to tweet my own horn. Okay, okay, and thank you for jumping in. I, I as I said before, our audience. I know you came to see uh, Andrew Kanyutu, but unfortunately, he had an emergency and had to cancel. However, we were fortunate enough to. Uh, have Chris jump onto the call uh, on very short notice. And I think he's shared quite a lot. Um, I can see people commenting and saying, James Gary is saying, my takeaway is that resilience and consistencies, uh, consistency always pays off in the end. Daniel says, my network is my network. Uh, thank you for this useful session. Uh, something else was said before. Um, uh, what is it there? Someone will not market my business for myself. I have to do the marketing as an entrepreneur personally. Uh, my takeaway is that uh, have systems that will ensure your business is profitable and have an action plan, which is actionable. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So thank you very much, my people, for coming. Thank you, thank you, Chris, for answering on such short notice. Joram, you are a lifesaver. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, we are say, we said we are in this together for, a, for the long haul. So thank you, Team Wild. Thank you, Team Sandbox, for, for this uh, enlightening session. Thank you, our sponsors, Bal uh, Balcon Housing and Stallion Construction Company. Thank you, Kapula Mintito, for your offer to give away. I am so sure, oh my God, God, we were not able to redeem that today but allow us to take it next week by the way next week we are discussing uh mental health we are discussing toxic workplaces so stay locked and we will be here with a consultant who will take us through that um thank you very much our audience for tuning in my name is grace nzula trainer and hr consultant with atara solutions and always i am your host please like our facebook page atara solutions follow us on instagram atara solutions Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get it right with Atara Solutions. I'm so sure for the people who are watching on Facebook, I hope you have clicked the like bus, uh, button. And for those of you who would like to follow uh, whatever this session, it will still, the video is on Facebook, but we will also upload it on uh, YouTube. And Chris, we're going to make a, a, a thumbnail on YouTube with your photo, at least so that we can salvage this situation. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, see you next week. Yes, thank you very much. So Asante Nisana, see you next week, same time, same place. And uh, if you need contacts for Chris, you can always reach me, but he has put all of them on the chat box. If you need to talk to our sponsors, Balcon Housing, on pieces of land or any investment in terms of property, kindly uh, get in touch with me and I'll be able to uh, um, link you up with them always uh, like the mintito couple of mintito facebook page or instagram and as always it's a pleasure and have a beautiful beautiful night oh yeah chris you're being told well done uh, build a business that will outlive you shilambiru is in biru say that so asanteni thank you